Yes. Uh, first of all, let, let me be a bit pushy here and say, you know what? It, it's not learning how to learn new things. I, I don't think that's important. It's important to have hard skills because you know what? If you, if you learn, say, the fundamentals of computer science, how computers work, you learn how to learn new things on the side. You're right that it's easier to test whether you have CS knowledge than figuring out whether you're a good learner. But it's hard, much harder to learn, I don't know, entry level statistics um, than many people think. So I'd say generally learn the hard stuff. That means for me, general understanding of computer science. That means fundamental mathematics, right? The stuff that but most of you maybe had in school and you don't quite remember how you how you work with these numbers. Learn that. Um, also, yeah, learn learn how to code. And by that I mean learn how to write little scripts that make your daily life easier. Most part, I agree with uh, with Dirk. Um, I agree in the way that I think everybody should obtain a fundamental understanding of of computer science, however you choose to do that. Um, I don't think it, it matters that much if you really want it. Um, I think you, you're going to be able to find it. And whichever way you choose, if it is going to the university to figure out uh, that you want to do math and computer science, you can also do like introduction to back end and front end and combine it with some math and figure out like how applications and how computer science essentially is working. Um, I think though, instead of, instead of jumping into actual coding, because I think if you actually do spend some time learning Python, you might be able to solve a few things. But the way I see the industry is that a lot of the automation stuff and a lot of this replacing repetitive work can be done with absolutely no coding experience. All you need is a, is a fairly fundamental understanding of the logic behind the, the issue you're trying to solve. And then you hook whichever application you're using up with Sapia. And you can essentially, with a few tutorials, uh, create more or less drag and drop applications that will make your everyday a lot easier. Um, so, while I think that, yeah, I agree with Doug, if you, if you spend three years getting a math degree and then you jump onto computer science and do a bachelor or, or a master's degree, you're no longer really doing law, you're becoming a developer. And that's fine, but then, like, legal professionals should not obtain that. A fundamental understanding of the logic behind law, behind computer science and how software works. I think that should be sufficient, at least to, to propel you into the future. And if you need to specialize within any area, information is come, becoming more and more easily accessible. You can probably get an introduction to machine learning um, from pretty much any Ivy League university and their online courses. You can take it on YouTube. You can do whatever you want. So the information is there. Quick follow up. Wouldn't you agree if you say you have to understand the logic behind your problem? And I agree. Absolutely. But I found it most useful to to get to the to that way of thinking of basically deriving at the knowledge if you have at least done some some of the developing work yourself. I'm not talking real applications and all, but just if people have never looped through a list or something, it's very hard for them to figure out how you translate your real world problem into that what you call the logic behind it. And if you say, well, it's not coding, how how do I get to think about problems in the way that you have described them? What, what, what is, how, how do I approach that if you say coding is not the best way? I think you can start fairly simply with if-then statements. I think that's a, that's a fairly valid point. So if you need to solve something that's fairly repetitive, uh, it could be filling out documents. So essentially my thinking and i think people who think about it is that you have information in point a and you need to transfer it to point b either you do it yourself or you figure out that if this information is present in a then transfer to b and i don't think you need any development experience you don't need to, to you need to be able to code i think what you need to be able to understand is that there is a trigger in one end that essentially transfers the information and then you need to specify where that information is transferred. So much like website development in the last five years has gone from, or 10 years, I've gone from like hard coding stuff and building the actual like print applications and then you see like Webflow and other applications coming in. I think most of this repetitive stuff is gonna be included in most of these glue-like applications where you can take um, your favorite applications for work, and you can actually connect those in a fairly straightforward and intuitive way where you don't need to understand the coding behind it. You just need to know that when A happens uh, somewhere, then B is the result somewhere else. 
I think that would be, be sufficient. I think that's going to increase over the coming years.